Your attention, please. <laughs> the Santa Fe and Disneyland passenger train, the E.P. Ripley, now loading on track number one for a trip around Walt Disney's Magic Kingdom. All aboard. Brakes released, opening up the throttle lever. It's opening a throttle valve inside the steam dome, administering steam in front of the boiler itself, and then turn the steam dome into the uh, the two cylinders, which are the actual engines, outside the front end of the locomotive. And it's that steam that's driving a set of a piston in each cylinder back and forth, giving us the motion that we need to drive the wheels. By the way, this is Jim. I'm Curtis. Oh, hi, Bill. I'm Robbie. Nice to meet you. Gentlemen, welcome aboard. I'm hoping to work here one day. I just think we said that a few short years ago ourselves. <laughs> and here we are. They say that this is the uh, this is the newest engine built in the 50s. This That's one? correct. Yeah. And they got others from the 1800s. One of them's from 1800 or something. It's amazing that they're staying running. <laughs> That's while we do a lot of rehab on there. This one was just rebuilt last year uh -huh. by uh, uh, actually year before. The it was the, the, end of last, the, the beginning of last year. Yeah. So we're. We're actually two of the guys that are mechanics too. We don't just oh, uh -huh. oh, wow. we, we, uh, work on it too. <laughs> Got a series of marker plates out here on your right uh -huh. that indicate where a particular locomotive pulling a specific set of cars, where we stop in conjunction with proper alignment for something. Take care now. Something that we do here at New Orleans Square, which is blow down the boiler at least once an hour, or in case we need to take water, it helps us to spot the uh, the tender cars that are properly aligned for the water as well as an ADA ramp, which is on the last car, to make sure that we have proper alignment for the ADA ramp to be able to come down and meet up with the platform uh -huh. in the very back end of the train. Is, is the signal is the same thing that powered the river boat? You know, the same boats on the river and <laughs> Excuse me, it's a somewhat similar concept, if you will, but the engines aboard the Mark Twain are much larger than the uh, engines and cylinders that we have aboard the locomotives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You guys ride the Mark Twain yet? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, that was nice. I didn't realize it has a real steam engine. It, it truly does. We run that too. Oh, wow. It's, it's a Scotch Marine designed boiler that's located in the middle of the main deck. And we fired that boiler at approximately between 100 to 110 pounds. Uh, it's a fairly low pressure system, actually. Uh -huh. And it's delivering the steam through an overhead pipe into the two engines, which are towards the back end of the boat. And they may have a, what, a 16 to 18 inch diameter, whereas the pistons aboard the locomotives are only 10 inch diameter, I believe. We have a very short stroke here for those pistons going back and forth inside the cylinder. On the Mark Twain, each engine takes a four foot long stroke. Oh, wow. 
what the valves and all this stuff. What, what do all these, it's just require steam? Uh, uh, well, my job is to keep the, keep the pressure there at bottom 125. Um, this is the main, main fuel blower and atomizer. So if it goes too high, you let some of the pressure off? Why well, I, I can uh, um, adjust the atomizer, the blower, um, you know, more obviously keep a lot of uh, air circulating inside the firebox. Um, and it just helps keep, fire, keep the fire at a nice, uh, or whatever I want to do, keep it a hot fire or a low fire. I see. And how do you saw the, does the light what tells you when to go? Uh, they tell us when to go. In a way, the outside light that you yeah. see that we're just about to cross here on the right uh -huh. is considered a dispatch signal for the conductor. Oh, I see. Okay. And once that turns green, it tells the conductor that we are clear to leave the station at their discretion. Two hours. 
hours. Take care, buddy. See ya. We have an eight-hour shift. So two. So you're up. On so two, we're on two? for two hours. Take Off a fifteen-minute break. Oh, thirty-minute minute lunch. Oh, and then we're right back on. Our again. job is to make sure that they get the break. And we are the break. are actually breakers today. So instead of being charged to a particular cab uh -huh. and it being our responsibility for the day, we get to just go around from one cab to the next to the next, relieving those crews throughout the day. Oh, I see. Uh -huh. In this fashion, it's very cool because we get to operate all of the equipment in, over the course of one day. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're all different. All the engines are different? Essentially, yes. And you will find that even though they're... they're because they're so mechanical, they have they develop a personality, if you will, an operating personality, and that personality changes from day to day because it's just such a basic mechanical type of equipment. Huh, interesting. Very interesting. And over time, we learn those little idiosyncrasies, if you will, of that particular locomotive and uh, kind of adapt to how it needs to be operated in the day. How often do you have to take on coal? You don't use coal. Matter of fact, engines three and five were, in fact, built originally for, for service with coal. Uh, but sometime during their career, they were converted over to burning fuel oil which is what we use today oh, fuel oil. Okay, is a type okay. of fuel oil in the last 50 years we've been burning diesel too as a fuel oil source but at the beginning of last year 07 we converted the five locomotives to burning a soybean oil a biodiesel wow much more environmentally friendly yeah yeah it is huh On a straight track, what would be a top speed that the engine could go? 30 miles an hour, uh -huh. excuse me, up to perhaps 40 miles an hour. Wow. Uh -huh. And make that just the locomotive itself, along with the tender car for the fuel and the water. Yeah. No hills, no curves, right, right, just right. a nice flat stretch of track. It also depends on the wheel configuration of each locomotive. The larger the diameter of the wheel is, the faster she'll travel. Look over your right shoulder through this corner, you're going to see our roundhouse. And the curve of left bed, that's locomotive number three. We built over this year. Wow. It's our oldest locomotive. It was originally manufactured by Baldwin Locomotive Works in 1894. Wow. How long is the trip around the park? How many uh, miles is it? I believe just over one mile. Uh huh. Curtis, can you help me out with that? You're right. Notice I have a speedometer gauge up here, and it's calibrated in terms of feet per second. Ah, well, my maximum speed around the park is 17 feet per second. It translates into about, uh, converts rather into about 13 and a half, 14 miles per hour. Actually, we're a little slower than that. I believe 14 feet per second 
uh, converts to uh, 10 miles per hour. So we're, we're only traveling between 11 and 12 miles 15, per hour. 50 feet per second at 12.88 uh, uh, miles an hour. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I forgot. <laughs> so we're taking a relatively slow pace around the park. Right. People enjoy the ride, just to Absolutely. relax and sit down. As do we. Yeah, right, right, right. You're the one driving it, so of course you enjoy it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're operating vintage, truly vintage live scheme equipment in a multi-million dollar landscape. We're having a good time. Yeah. And they actually pay us for it. So, yeah, we have a very good time. Although, let it be known that when the summer months roll around, it's hot. You must drink a lot of liquid. We do. Matter of fact, speaking off the record, my name is uh, currently Fred. Uh -huh, sure, Fred, yeah. On, but uh, during the summer months, we particularly are encouraged to always have water with us, whereas in the rest of the park, it's kind of a touch. The, the company shies away from guests being able to see us carrying something like this. But in this heat, oh, you, you have to. It's yeah, a matter yeah, yeah. of survival for us, really. Exactly. Because, like I said, one of our engineers truly brought in a thermometer, an automotive thermometer, one day in the middle of that last heat wave that we had. Hung it from, suspended it from the cab roof. And we said, Gary, we already know it's hot. We don't have to prove anything. Ah, I want to see what it is. And what was it? It pegged at 130. Oh, my God. Oh, gee. That's too much. Oh, that's hot. So we are in our bed during those summer months. Yeah, that's... Whatever the outside air temperature is, just the outside temperature. Just add 20 to 30 degrees, and that's the temperature inside the cabin. So Curtis explained a bit about the fireman's side and his controls as the fireman. She's not going to go. Essentially the center pit that has been centered up inside the cylinder. And I can't gain a movement advantage, at least in the forward direction. So I'm going to go back a little bit, up to about a foot. And that should give me an advantage I need to start rolling forward again. And there we go. Huh. So on my side of the cab throttle lever, a reversing lever, uh -huh. as you just saw, yeah. I bring that all the way back, it causes the wheels rotate backwards. So it's affecting the direction of the train, as well as, once we're in motion, I can start bringing this bar back. And for the same throttle setting, I'm using less lean for the same amount of work. It's like an economizer or a gear shift, in a way. Uh -huh. They think Disneyland's in Florida. Right, right. Whereas we are the original. And I, I do tell them that. I tell them that Disneyland's the original. And I'm like, no way. And I'm like, yes way. Go on the internet and it'll tell you. This is the original. 
Uh, Sometimes they just don't believe me. Well, I do. Well, I know you do, because you worked here. And my and my friends um, who are on Vicious Fantastic know that too. <laughs> you realize that the diorama here was actually built, I believe, at the Burbank Studios and was shipped to New York for the World Trade World Trade Fair or Expo. Sixty, sixty something, sixty four. Yes. Right. Uh, that's when it's a small world debut. I think. Yes. Yeah. And this whole set piece was shipped back to California and inset back into the park, and it's been here ever since. I remember this from when I was a kid. Absolutely. Probably like 50 years old. Fairly low maintenance. We just have to feed the dinosaurs about what, once a week, is it? <laughs> right, right. Thank you so much. Yeah, this thank you. This is great. Good ride. Yeah. No problem.